Accelerated Spanish, episode 76. How fast do you want to be fluent in Spanish? Using our tested system that combines timeless language learning hacks with a memory palace of mnemonics, you can be ready to integrate with native speakers in as little as one month. Today we're going to learn several new tangible physical nouns in Joel's main hall. We'll move basically from the top to the bottom of the hall, starting with the ceiling, where we've already stored the words agua, luz, fuego, and aire. On the right side of the ceiling, near the fuego wig and the aire air vent, he has something that looks like a fan, a ceiling fan, but instead of a real fan, Joel has a solid gold oar hanging from the ceiling that's constantly rowing to move the air around. He calls this an oro because only very wealthy bees can afford to have this device since it's much more expensive than a normal ceiling fan. The word oro, spelled O-R-O, means gold. So remember the ore made of gold. Let's go a little lower down to the balcony at the top of this hall where we have the suit of armor that's holding an arm in one hand. Today, this suit of armor has another weapon in its other hand. And basically, this is a spade that has been ground down and sharpened, and now this thing can use it as a sword. Joel's word for sword is espada. So it's kind of like spade, you know, a shovel. But it's spelled E-S-P-A-D-A, espada for sword. Now let's go a little lower down to where Joel stores animals on the wall near the staircase. Joel doesn't like mammals, but he does find humans interesting as a species. He keeps a picture of a man on the wall next to his stairs to represent mankind, and his word for human is humano. It has a silent H at the beginning, humano. Now we'll go below the stairs to the place where he has foods. Joel's Come Eat sign for comida now has a subtitle written on it. So now it says, Come eat or you're insane. We've seen that Joel has a very deep emotional relationship with his food. He always begins to lose his sanity when he's hungry, especially at dinner time. In fact, he now associates dinner with sanity, so he calls dinner cena. So remember that food is comida, as in come eat, but dinner keeps Joel sane, so he calls it cena. Joel's favorite steak is shaped like his blue car and is kept on the left side of the food table underneath this sign. He calls steak carne because this steak is shaped like his car. Carne. The word carne simply means meat or flesh in general. Now in front of this table, we have words that represent modes of transportation, such as car or airplane. There's a little toy train that runs in a little circle around his auto, coche, and barque. This is a tren, T-R-E-N, tren for train. Now let's go to the left of this. There's a little table near the food table. Joel likes this little table to catch the mess from the food that spills off the table because he doesn't want it to get on his carpet. He calls this little table a mesa. So it kind of stresses mess. Mesa. Mesa simply means table. Now remember that Joel has a cama on the left side, a bed that's shaped like a comma. Joel keeps a cardboard box beside it. There's a crow inside of this box that's constantly laughing because the box is full of laughing gas. This is one of his experiments that he does. He likes to see how long a crow can keep laughing. He calls this box a caja. So it's kind of like the crow saying ka, ha. So box is caja. Now, Joel keeps a lock on the crow's box to keep it from escaping, but he never uses the key to unlock the box. He mainly uses this key to jab at the crow inside, 
And now, whenever he uses a key in a door, he thinks of jabbing it into the keyhole. He likes to pretend that something's on the other side, and when he sticks the key in, it's poking that thing, or jabbing it, as he would say. Joel's word for key sounds a little bit like jab, and the word is jave. So it's spelled with a V, but remember that his Vs and Bs sound very similar. This word is spelled L-L-A-V-E, jave. Next to this box for caja and jave, Joel has a deck of blank playing cards that he finds extremely useful. He writes all kinds of things on these cards, menus, maps, playing cards, and lots of other things. Pretty much anything that he could write or draw on a card, he calls a carta. So carta sounds kind of like the English word card, but it means very many things in Spanish, including menu, playing card, and several other things. Now let's go to the right side of the hall. Joel has a giant book that looks like a bank. He likes this book a lot because it makes him think of money, and since it's such a thick book, he often takes it from his library down to the hall and uses it as a bench to sit on. But of course, since it's a book, it's kind of slippery and easy to fall off of. If he asks a guest to sit on the bench, he likes to watch them and see if they fall off. And if they do, he says, bonk, and laughs loudly. The word here is banco. So B-A-N-C-O, banco. This word means bench. Now, you'll learn later that it's also the word for bank, which seems a bit odd because they aren't really connected in English, but in Spanish, it's the same word for both. So think of a bank book that people sit on. Banco. Nearby, there is a seagull with a bow on her head that Joel has received as a gift. Joel's favorite things to give and receive as gifts are gulls or gals. In fact, this particular seagull has been gifted and re-gifted back and forth between Joel and other people many times because it makes such a great gift. The word for gift in Spanish is regalo. So the stress is gal, but it's like a seagull that's a female. So you could think gull or gal. Regalo. In tomorrow's episode, we'll learn more nouns for people in the living room and feelings in the dining room. This show is brought to you by masterofmemory.com. Music for this episode was provided by the Seattle Marimba Quartet, and I'm Timothy, encouraging you to take action. Knowledge is not power until it's applied, so start speaking Spanish now at SpanishInOneMonth.com. 